Welcome to Java, one of Indonesia's most fascinating and diverse islands. From volcanic mountain landscapes to charming fishing villages, from bustling mega cities to historic temples surrounded by lush green rice fields. Home to more than half of all Indonesians, the island brims with culture and traditions and also boasts some of the most spectacular natural scenery in the country. I traveled through Asia for a number of years and went to Java for more than a month. And in this video I want to share with you my personal top 10 places to visit. In our journey in Jakarta, the political and economic center of Indonesia. Over 10 million people live here, making it one of Asia's largest cities. At first sight, the nation's capital can feel overwhelming with massive traffic jams and towering skyscrapers. But when you spend some time here, you'll discover this city offers more than first meets the eye. A good place to start exploring Jakarta is Merdaka Square in the very heart of the city. It's filled with monuments and museums and provides a great insight in the recent history of Indonesia. Not far from here is the impressive Istiqlal Mosque, an important place of worship that can hold up to 200,000 people. For a different side of Jakarta, travel to the old city Batavia, known today as Kota. This was the hub of Dutch colonial Indonesia. Don't miss out on the nearby historic port, called Sunda Kalapa, to catch a glimpse of traditional wooden cargo vessels. For some contrast, head to one of the modern shopping malls in central Jakarta, where you will find countless stores and perhaps more importantly, some great food courts. On Sundays, parts of Jakarta ban traffic and crowds of people fill the streets. Some go for a walk, Others organize events and many come just for the good atmosphere. It symbolized what was the highlight of my visit to Jakarta, the positive and dynamic attitude of the people. After the hustle and bustle of the capital, we travel to Yogyakarta, by many considered as the cultural heartland of Java Island. The most fascinating place to visit here is the Kraton, a massive palace complex in the center of the city. Yogyakarta is ruled by a sultan, and the region is considered a monarchy with a certain autonomy. The Kraton is more like a walled city, and the compound is home to around 25,000 people, some of which also work for the Sultan. Come here to stroll around, or listen to a performance of Gamelan, Java's most recognized music. Gamelan can also be heard during a show of Bayang, the traditional shadow puppet theater.
Yogyakarta is located in one of Java's most fertile regions. Agriculture is an integral part of daily life here. And visiting the surrounding countryside is a great way to get up close with local farmers. Most are growing rice, the main staple in Indonesia and an important source of livelihood for millions of people. For our next destination we stay in the same region, visiting two of the most spectacular temples in Indonesia. Set in a beautiful green landscape, with volcanoes as backdrop, Borobudur is a stunning Buddhist temple complex, built around 1200 years ago. Borobudur is beautiful from afar, but equally impressive from up close, with its many detailed statues and sculptures. Unlike Borobudur, the remarkable temples of Prambanan are actually of Hindu origin. They were built in the same period, when both Buddhist and Hindu dynasties ruled Java Island. Both temples were restored multiple times and became UNESCO World Heritage three decades ago. We continue our journey through Java, visiting Mount Bromo, one of Indonesia's most iconic volcanoes. It is located in a massive crater and contrasts beautifully with two other volcanoes. Appreciating the breathtaking landscape from a distance is one thing, but hiking the active volcano is really another, and something I highly recommend doing. A clear pathway leads people to the ridge of Bromo, from where you get a peek into its crater with billowing smoke and thundering lava. It's an exhilarating experience, with surreal views all around. The next spot on my list the tranquil seaside village Pangandaran offers a welcome break from all the traveling. The town's location is spectacular on a narrow peninsula with long beaches on either side and a beautiful national park at the very tip. People come here mostly to relax, to sail a classic fishing boat or surf some of the powerful waves or even to visit the sunken vessel right off the coast. This shipwreck was sunk by the authorities and kept there as a statement against illegal fishing. While peaceful during weekdays, the town gets busy during weekends and holidays, as it's an easy trip from some of Java's major cities. The next destination is Samarang, a bustling city in the north of Java. Some of the main attractions here are the historic buildings that are dotted around the town, especially in the Dutch colonial quarter. Many are in a state of decay, but some are well preserved and open to visit. The beautiful Garaja Blenduk an elegant church built two and a half centuries ago is still used as a place of worship for the Christian minority in Samarang.
Also impressive is the La Vangse Vu building, the old railway headquarters, located on one of Semarang's busiest intersections. For a blend of traditional and modern architecture, head straight to the Great Mosque of Central Java, a visually striking building. After Semarang, we travel to Kawa Ijen, a volcanic lake offering some of Indonesia's most surreal natural landscapes. This acidic lake is located at an altitude of over 2,000 meters and provides stunning vistas. With sulfurous smoke billowing from the edges and its high acidic levels, however, this is definitely not a place to go for a swim. It's quite a hike up here, but nothing compared to the extreme working conditions of some of the local sulfur miners. Several hundred collectors come here to cut rocks of sulfur by hand, nearby the lake. Often without meaningful protection against the toxic smoke. They can carry loads between 60 and 90 kilograms and get paid very little for it. Tourists are advised against going down the actual crater, as they lack local experience and are usually overwhelmed by the smoke. Ijen is best reached via Banyuwangi, located in the very east of Java and our next destination. It's a pleasant and friendly town to walk around. You can visit some of the local markets and admire the brightly decorated fishing boats in the port. Try to come here when some of the fishermen come in from sea to deliver their catch. Thanks to its location near the volcanic Ijen, the region around Banyuwangi is well suited for agriculture, including cacao and rubber production. But probably the most well-known product is the Java coffee, which was first cultivated at the turn of the 18th century. Some of Java's finest coffees, both Arabica and Robusta, are grown here. It's possible to visit one of the plantations, a great way to get a sense of how that coffee you drink in the morning is made. If you're more of a tea person and interested to see how it is produced, then Wono Sobo is a good place to go. Located in central Java, the town is surrounded by lush green mountains, creating great conditions for growing tea. Indonesia has historically been a major tea producer, even if the industry is facing challenges these days. It's possible to visit one of the tea plantations here to see how it is harvested and get a look at the factory where batches of fresh tea are ready to be shipped. Bonosobo is also the gateway to the Jeng Plateau, a good place for hiking. But I advise to go here only if weather permits. We finished this journey in Surabaya, Indonesia's second largest city and an important business and trading hub. It may not be on top of most travelers' itineraries, but it's an interesting place to visit, nonetheless. 
The city holds a special place in the hearts of many Indonesians, as a fierce battle was fought here, during the independence war from Dutch colonial rule. Visit the Heroes Monument, stroll around the Arab neighborhood, or have a look in the sizable Chinatown. Perhaps the most impressive building in Surabaya is the Al Akbar Mosque, in the south of the city. Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the world, and Islam is part of everyday life for many people. The beautiful mosque is open to visitors, and caretakers are happy to show you around. And on Friday, after the main prayer, the area around the mosque becomes an open-air restaurant with street food sellers offering their finest dishes. And that concludes my personal top 10 places to visit on Java. One of Indonesia's most beautiful and diverse islands. I hope this video gave you some travel inspiration or at least provided some new insights into this fascinating place. If you enjoyed watching, feel free to give a like or leave a comment below. Thanks for your support and I hope to see you again next time. Travel safely!